don't be too pressured into making something original you know yeah also like um original isn't a synonym for good you know yeah, oh, yeah exactly <laughs> like just because like, it's original doesn't mean it's good everybody welcome back to the jesse nyberg podcast we're here with ram uh overset text on instagram talented designer and kind of content creator person that i've met somewhat recently and excited to chat with him how you doing man i am good uh it feels good to be here thank you for having me mm -hmm. uh -huh. no stuff i'm happy you got the mic i've noticed more and more <laughs> people have mics and it's like very exciting for me when they have a mic. oh yeah so you don't have to worry about uh audio quality yeah yeah, yeah. but then some people the the issue is they'll have a mic but they don't really have i guess what's the word like the etiquette of it or whatever so they're just like banging on their desk and shit oh, and like, yeah yeah I used, to, I used to record podcasts too, or just or be on podcasts or yeah this is primarily for the twitch that i do so oh, yeah. I, like, oh, I need i need i need some good sound quality you used to be uh, on podcasts you said what, i don't know i mean everybody has that? a everybody has podcasts you know everybody so in just the past. always on them yeah or just like or you know make podcasts like many yeah. many failed podcasts have been have happened but for sure yeah yeah it's really hard to um I even struggle with that myself, like figuring out, you know, why, what, what can I do that's like somewhat different, you know, or like, how can I separate yeah. this in any way from other things? Cause you could look mm -hmm. at like every single niche, every single like category within that niche of everything. And there's either, mm -hmm. you know, someone who has like YouTube channel about it or a podcast or streams yeah. about it. Like it's almost impossible. It seems like to do something that is like completely original. Yeah, well, that's actually a good good point where I don't think anything needs to be original, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, I don't think, I think originality is not even a thing. Like, it's just like mm. remixes of remixes of everything that's come before. So, yeah. which is like, I guess that comes down to the Instagram or graphic design. Because I know originality is like a huge uh, originality. Everyone's trying to go be original. Mm -hmm. But is that even like worth pursuing sometimes? Although yeah. some people might misconstrue this statement. I was like, oh, that means you just copy, copy, copy this. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what it means. Mm -hmm. Like it means I feel like just don't be too pressured into making something original, you know? Yeah. Also like um, original isn't a synonym for good, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> like just because it's original doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. yeah, and just because uh, it's influenced or whatever doesn't inherently mean that it's like uh, not exciting, you know, or not like yeah. captivating or whatever. I agree, though. I think, I mean, obviously, there's things that were done, you know, before, like in the mm -hmm. in the when the world was black and white or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, like shit was had to have been done for the first time at some point. But yeah, I think yeah. it's fewer and farther in between in any kind of yeah. field that things are original and i think yeah if you yeah. fixate yourself on that like i used to fixate on that a lot and it would like sometimes um like hinder me from like doing the actual thing you know and oh that's yeah weird. no that's exactly i like don't i don't know it's just not a thing you should not not, not a thing you should strive for but it's i don't think it's real <laughs> people are yeah. listening to it like oh it's not real i'm like I, w I just watched a great video on youtube it's called everything is a remix mm -hmm. uh you sh everyone should watch that it's a great like history of like uh about like just remix or just everything is just comes from something mm -hmm. i mean it's kind of like you know it's just like everything on this earth comes from something even like the grass like that came from right. something and then it grows and it becomes something else but it was from something it just you know forever like even in nature there's something like that so I think even in art, it's the same thing. That's so. like, um, you know that like uh, three percent thing, like the Virgil uh, mm -hmm. thing he did, where yeah, like for anyone that doesn't know, it's obvious. It's like, um, you know, he would get criticized for like only changing like the Air Force Ones or whatever he was putting his yeah. spin on oh so much, and he said something along the lines that if you change something more than three percent, like you lose the um, the appeal of like what the people liked originally about that thing. Mm -hmm. yeah it's just like slowly changing it or just like doing whatever you like honestly it's just like 
Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, don't don't overthink it too much. I feel like as designers, we overthink a lot to yeah. the point where we stop. I mean, that's like that's the joy. That's the best thing about being a graphic designer or an artist is like overthinking it. Mm-hmm. But also, there comes to a point where that's too much of a hindrance, right? You know. I also think a lot of people use uh, like the overthinking and like perfectionism thing as like a um, like an excuse, I guess, or like some kind of crutch. Like, oh, oh. I, I'm just I'm not done yet because like I'm just like a perfectionist, or like it takes me like really long to do stuff or whatever. And it's like yeah. it takes everyone whatever speed they do things. That's true, yeah. But like, uh, you know, like finishing it's better than it being perfect. No, exactly. Well, that's like the ex- exercise I've been with the three six five. That's like what I've I've been learning mm-hmm. is that done is better than than perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who said that, but whoever said that, uh, they went off. But uh, yeah, done is better than Rosa perfect. Parks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was Gandhi. Gandhi said that. Yeah, it's like a Klinkenberg who said oh, that. Oh god, Chris. But I think. Um, uh, I talked about this on, I was talking to like Harry Vincent one time, uh, mm-hmm. just on, that a, guy. on a call cause we're working on like this collab thing. That's mm-hmm. kind of secretive, but I'll, I'll talk about it later when it, when it's out. But <laughs> yeah, we, uh, they did this like study where, uh, it was some kind of like pottery class or whatever. Right. And then one half of the class, they got 30 days to do one, um, one pot. And then the mm-hmm. other side of the class had to make one each day, you know? Mm-hmm. And then the thirtieth one that the people each day made was better than the one that the people spent the whole time working on because they didn't have the practice every day of creating a new one, a new one, a new one. Oh uh, yeah, see, that's I think that's what I'm learning on this three six five. It's just like you know, the daily practice of something mm-hmm. creative. It's like, it's fun. You know, I know I know burnout is a huge issue within our industry, but I kind of feel. Like, like you said, it's like a, an excuse or mm. maybe that fear is a little bit too much, especially when you're not doing anything. Yeah. I think it was actually, uh, Enrica on this podcast where he said, uh, he doesn't believe in creative burnout. I mean, yeah. uh, I kind of agree. I mean, I don't agree with that it's not real, but I think it is kind of, uh, it's in your head a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just kind of need to put yourself give yourself a deadline. I think that's, I think that's the, I think that's what I've learned about this project. Uh, is that deadlines give you like a push, even imaginary ones. Yeah. For uh, sure. Even, even the ones you set yourself, uh, yeah. it gives you a push. I, um, there's this other podcast I listen to. It's called make art, not content. It's by this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, father bronx it's kind of like a yeah, harry vince is a big fan of that i need to listen yeah to yeah it. yeah he, he he put me onto that and um yeah, he the guy talks about um you know like quality and quantity and he says that like he always talks about how like quantity is more important and like he doesn't think that they they are independent of each other you can make a lot mm-hmm. of things and they also be good and he mm-hmm. says everyone always you know all the like quality people always get like hella like butthurt when he says like, oh, you should make shit every day or whatever because they say, yeah. oh, I need all this time, yada, yada. But like there's some people that their work, you could just tell it doesn't need that much time. Like there's other things where if you're like doing some crazy, you know, like painting that takes you like a hundred days to finish, like I understand that you're not, you shouldn't be, yeah. you know, it's not for Instagram or anything like that anyway. Yeah. But if you're just creating like a bullshit thing for the internet, it shouldn't take you more than like a few days, you know? Yeah. Or it's just like sometimes ideas just like come together so well. Like Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you didn't try. Sometimes it just comes together and you feel like, should I work on this more? But sometimes it's just perfect or like it's good. You're happy with it. That doesn't mean you need to continue editing more. I think so that it comes just with happens. experience, you know, it gets easier yeah. to do things. So you think yeah. that since you become like more and more efficient that it's like, you know, mm-hmm. less valuable or whatever, because it yeah. only took you an hour. I think, and also it's like, it depends on like what you're trying to achieve anyways. Like, what are you, what are you trying mm-hmm. to say? Uh, and you, if you feel like you already felt like you did what you needed to say that thing, uh, I don't think you need to spend any more time. I mean, obviously care about it, especially if it's like a bigger project, but. 
again, it's better done right. than perfect. I remember, and, um, I forgot who said it, but it was one of those like kind of old school, like designer type dudes, like probably like Paul Rand or some shit. Right. But he said, I just um, discovered Paul Rand. Uh, what did he say? <laughs> he said, uh, I know I'm finished. This might not even be him, so I don't know if he said this, but so it said, I know I'm finished, not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away, you know? So oh, like- I, I fully agree with that. Like, shit doesn't have to be fucking so crazy all the time. Like it could yeah. be effective and simple. Also that like my style, I, I get I get anxious about too many elements on the page. Mm. I like simplicity, minimalism, I guess, but- I always ask myself, what can I take away without going or without taking away uh, the message or whatever I'm trying to say? Yeah. Uh, I always ask myself, like, what can I remove from this? Because I don't like too much shit on the whatever. I'm just like, I think mm. that's what has worked um, in your favor for making your stuff like engaging, but also like easy enough to digest to where like someone can understand the full thing quickly and mm -hmm. then they can make a decision on like what to do with that, you know? And I feel like yeah. your shit gets shared quite a bit and it has like a yeah. good, um, good, like something that other, they want other people to see this like, Oh, it's almost like a, a <laughs> meme in that sense. Not that it's it is, bad, yeah. but it's like, <laughs> no, it Oh look, meme. this is funny. Like she let's show this to other people. And I feel yeah. like that's, um, worked for you, like using that style, you know? I, I've talked about this on my on my stream. I've discovered as I've done the three six five. I've formulated, I've formulated a formula <laughs> of because uh, you know obviously I want to grow, but also I want to like be true to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I have like three. Oh, man, I gotta. I, I I forgot it, but it's shareable, legible. That's what it is. It's two. I think. I I think that's only it. I don't yeah. know what the third one is, but shareable and legible because people on Instagram love to read and people love to share it, you know, right. the like, pillars of success. Yeah. Right shareable, there. legible. That's it. Like, I know, like we love, we love stretching font. We love all that stuff. But what I found, especially for me, is if I look at something and I can't read it, I will scroll past it. Right. Like, I'm not going to unless. Well, this is my my strategy in my head is that. I want to lure you in with like a big headline or something funny or interesting. Yeah, like a baby and, crying or something. Yeah. Shit. And then in the tiny text, like lure you in. Well, I guess that's just like comes from like my background as a designer. Cause like I used to design newspapers. Mm. So it was always like big headline, big image. How do we make someone. Yeah. Uh, it's a clickbait, you know? Yeah. Or right. uh, yeah. Click or pick. Oh, well, we used to have physical paper. Cause like, and when I was in college, you know, we had, we printed pick the papers, up pick up bait or like something. Yeah. We need someone to like, when they're walking to class and they see the paper, like we need to give them a reason to pick it up. Yeah. So, and that's like my job as a designer. I was like, all right, how do I make them pick it up before? And usually it's just big fonts, which I, which is why I love big fonts. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, <laughs> uh, so I love Futura, like those bold fonts. Yeah. But yeah. Shareable, legible and that's those that's, that's a formula of success did you <laughs> on instagram because um, you mostly use like futura and apple garamond right i would say no i use like a lot. i actually don't use apple garamond because i can't use that commercially because i sell all my prints or I my see. posts as prints already so i use uh i use ivy presto that is my okay that is my go-to. It's, it's kind of the same though right yeah they are oh well, and then i condense it a little bit and i use metal yeah. display which right, you put yeah, me on, by the way. Thank you so much. One. Thank, uh, I yeah, think, I love um, Meta Display. That look also like it. Um, it fulfills those requirements of the legible mm -hmm. and the uh, shareable. I already forgot shareable. Yeah. However, did you when you first started doing that? Was that from uh, just from your background as like in print, or was it were you influenced by like the magazine kind of eighties like style stuff? Oh, I I. I think it's a bit of both because I really mm. like 80s stuff, like especially 80s, 70s advertising. Like yep. I'm obsessed with 70s advertising because 
I actually watched like a documentary of like back in the day. About, and now like, it's like mainstream, which is yeah. And like it's just because they had like no rules. <laughs> like they just yeah. there, there was no rules in advertising. They were like advertising cigarettes as children or whatever. But yeah. they were saying stuff on copy. Like that's what I love the most. Like I love clever copy. Like yeah, strong. I that is one of the things I really want to like. If I could contribute, like I want people to just like think about what copy they write or like what are you trying to say? Because I think mm. that's what what I attribute my success to because like I always like what am I trying to say with this design I mean I'll make it look good like, I'll make it look graphic design but also I want to be able to say something with it because you know I don't know I just that's what gets me going to to keep making stuff because like what can I say what mood am I trying to say sometimes it doesn't need to be copy sometimes it's just like yeah whatever it is but good copy and that leads to like the shareable legible stuff it's like they could read what you're trying to say then that's good you know mm-hmm. And that's the other, uh, then the other, it has to, you have to have a message, I guess. That's your other yeah, message. Or, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything like, uh, deep or, deep or anything or political, which yeah. I still do. I still, I love political stuff. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I care about, about things. Actually, one of the biggest, like one of the first posts that blew up was like about the paper straws thing. And then, yeah, that's funny. Uh, but I mean, I make posters about fucking horses, like bring back horses. <laughs> doesn't have to yeah. be, doesn't have to be that deep. It could just be something interesting, you know? Cause there's such, you... there's so much, sorry. There's so much like noise on Instagram. Like you need to like, if you want, like do like, I, I'm not telling people to like do this to make your work better. I'm telling you if you want to stand out on Instagram, right? Like you need to do that. You know. I think you're a good example of this. And you mentioned Ed and he's a, in a similar vein where you guys have uh, like full on reached the audience of non-design people with a lot of your mm-hmm. stuff. Like you have yeah. uh, art appreciators or whatever you want to call it design, mm-hmm. like or just people that like shit that's funny or want to spread a yeah. message, you know, people that share your work. They're like they're anything from like liking the design to like just shit posting like type yeah. people you know and then people that would share someone like ed's work is like they just like all that like emotional type yeah, yeah, shit yeah. you know like the mental health and, stuff um, yeah it's interesting because i feel like that's where artists get and designers get a lot of like imposter syndrome is mm-hmm. you could make the coolest shit ever and like some of in my opinion the best things i've ever done like oh, there's yeah. shit on instagram like no one cares oh, because yeah, they yeah. don't <laughs> have like they're not shareable you know so like yeah, you can't that, equate that to like mm-hmm. if, if like sharing a post or engagement was an equivalent to how good a designer was then you're like yeah. the best designer i've ever met oh in my yeah, life, yeah you know yeah no, there's like way more talented designers. Like I'll admit, like there's so many more talented designers with less followers than me. Yeah, uh, I agree with that myself too. And even like my, on my Instagram, like when I work on something really hard and I love it and I think it's one of the best things I've ever made, I post it, no engagement. That's, yeah. what, it, that, that's what happens. If I really like it, yeah. It's not gonna get engaged, and nobody's gonna yeah. like this. That's how it goes. But like when I make something in like an hour or like thirty minutes, and I post it, and it just gets like what, like five thousand likes. Like I don't get it. Like why do you guys like? It? So, yeah. So you shouldn't use social media as a barometer of your success. But in terms of me, because like I wanted like an audience, like I wanted to like grow right. or whatever, just so I could have more opportunities. It's just. I also, this is the other formula that I developed through this journey was make one for yourself and one for the algorithm. That's what I, mm. that's why I always like have in the like back of my for, mind. Like for your portfolio or whatever? Or for the Instagram. Well, cause I, you know, I do this every day and I, I have right. like 365 days to fill. Sure. Uh, I got to do, oh, you know. switch off, you know? Switch like off. That, like, you know, so. somebody said, yeah. I don't know. There was like a director that said this. See, like I said, nothing's original. Uh, a director said this, like, make a feature film just to make bank. And then you can make that art house movie you wanted. Right. So I don't know which director said, maybe Spielberg or whatever. But one of them said that, and I kind of took applied that to my Instagram. Like, all right, I'm going to make one for the algorithm. Code. I know what, I think I know what does well on the algorithm. So I'll make one that's kind of geared towards that, but still is me. Uh, you know, I do it my way, but like, it's definitely like, I want people to share it or whatever. And then one that just is for me. And sometimes the one that I do for me gets more likes than anything I've ever done before. And then I was like, okay. Right. So it's like a good, 
you know, get a good balance because like sometimes both of those are true. Sure. And then, then you know, it's just and also it just gives me direction of what to do because like people always ask me like, well, how do you how do you do this every day? Like, how do you not run out of ideas? Well, mm-hmm. it's because like I kind of put some pressure on myself, and I just write down everything. I just like oh, what ideas I have or, yeah, but yeah. I I get that. I used to do this thing where I still do sometimes, but I think it was more when I was a little bit more, uh, I guess, angsty towards like clients or whatever. Like there would, if I had a lot of revisions, I'd get to a point where it's like, all right, like here's your thing that you want. Right. And then I would do the one that I wanted and I'd put that in the portfolio, you know, or whatever, because it's like more than not, the person that's looking at your work is not going to be like, let's go see if that was like the actual thing and go do some research and shit. So it's like, yeah. it could be a little bit different or whatever. Yeah. But, um, what was I going to say? Totally forgot. Oh, you're talking about the director thing. It's funny how like, I always do that. I always think of things I've heard and like, I've never gotten like a quote, right? I don't think like, I never yeah. know who said anything and I yeah, feel me bad. Neither. So I'm not gonna like about, it's probably Spielberg. It's like yeah, the I don't know. I'm not gonna write ever. it down. I'm not gonna say who it is, but some yeah. director said it. Uh, somebody will correct me. Somebody in the comments yeah. will correct me who it is. But yeah, that's just how I viewed like Instagram or whatever. Yeah. So when uh, with doing something every day, like did you? I haven't done a full like all the way back to your beginning, but was there a point where you thought you? developed like that formula you were talking about with at least the formatting and things or were it's, you always kind of doing it that way <laughs> in the very beginning i was i didn't really know what to do because i know mm-hmm. i was very much inspired by like elliot's cool guy mm-hmm. uh i'm just Sai on instagram and just a bunch of people and i didn't really know what to do but the time i got to the paper straws one I was kind of like an Elliot clone. Somebody said that on my Instagram, but I was an <laughs> Elliot clone because I was like doing whatever. I was just like, okay, gradient orbs, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really find out. I haven't found orbs. my voice yet. I haven't found yeah. my voice yet. So, and then once it came to the paper straws one, like I had, I, that was like the very first post I've ever made that got like 10,000 likes and it was like mm. shared a lot. And like, oh yeah, like I've never 11, seen like 000. my story story reshares thing you know where you could see your reshares like on the oh, story yeah, you gotta do it like that yeah but like i was looking at it and it was just like updating which like, i was like whoa as you looked at it yeah as yeah. i looked at it i was like whoa and yeah, then cool. that was the first thing and then that's when i realized like oh i could just say whatever i want <laughs> mm-hmm. or say how because i elliot kind of sh- before i started it elliot showed me that like oh funny graphic design or like funny design is possible which i sure. i'd like to think i'm funny i'm funny in real life i'd like to think uh mm-hmm. so he showed me that like oh that is possible and that could actually be engaging uh so i was yeah. like okay i could do that and i didn't really do that until that post and then after that i started doing it a lot more and then i kind of found my footing of where i stood yeah uh, that's how i yeah that's how i kind of found my voice I, I, I kind of took that a little bit of that from Elliot as well. Not so much as in like the obvious sense, but mm-hmm. I'd like to fuck around in like the body mm-hmm. copy and like the really yeah, small yeah, yeah. shit. Cause it's like at face value, it's maybe something serious or experimental or dark, but like at the bottom, sometimes I'll write like, you know, I'll just write small copy or whatever. Like yeah, literally, yeah, no, I'll exactly. just say that <laughs> and it's, it's nice. And I think it's just even funnier Cause I really look at my posts, my Instagram as like, it's kind of a, sh- it's like a meme account, a shit posting account. Like I just kind of shit post, but in graphic design. Yeah. Because it's like tweets I, almost the shit. Yeah, you say, it is, yeah. yeah. Cause like, I was like, because like on Instagram, on social media, we are basically, uh, competing with everybody else. The news, meme accounts, whatever, like literally your friends, you're competing yeah. for their attention. Like, so we don't need to abide by like graphic design standards, like what is and what isn't on allowed on in, on graphic design. And I think it's just funny also because like the content, the copy, the, the, the text is so stupid, but it's so yeah. it's laid out very nice, written out in a nice font that I think that is 
what's funny about like i enjoy it like when i'm on photoshop and i'm like making stuff and i literally la like this is also my barometer of what i what i make and what i post it's like if i make myself laugh while making it uh then i'm like i'm posting it like this is good like yeah. i don't care if nobody likes it uh i like it so i'm gonna post it so but yeah i think it's just so funny like to me so yeah i, <laughs> I, I, I knew that it. you kind of started hitting like the mass reach or whatever because a lot of the friends i know that aren't designed at all like they were all sharing your like um the gaslight like girl boss oh the gaslight like girl one. oh yeah the, the kellogg's too one. but that was more like political you know but the, yeah, yeah. that one was just like that i don't know everyone like i guess <laughs> i like, didn't know those, that one those words are hard. such buzzwords is why oh yeah you know? no, guess like, like, also i was just like yeah i was just like what what is funny like yeah gaslight like your boss like dude just don't and that's just like my personal experience <laughs> I, mean, I didn't gaslight my boss i was just like took longer breaks like back yeah. when i had a nine to five i was like like the I'm, fucking Marxism shit, like only yeah. take shits while you're on the clock. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that, I learned that <laughs> very early on. Like I had a full time job before the pandemic, and I was like, oh, I uh, I'm not going to the bathroom on on my time. Yeah, Fuck that. you gotta wait all weekend and save it till Monday. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm, no, I'm, I'm doing this on the clock. I'm on the what clock. was your um, what were you doing exactly before with like uh? You said you're doing newspaper stuff, but that wasn't your job, right? That was at no, the that school? Was, that was my job. Well, uh, For both, I guess. I was both. Well, throughout college, I have a journalism degree. I graduated with journal, in a degree in journalism. Okay. Uh, and throughout college, I was part of the school newspaper, both in community college and then in um, in my university. Where did you uh, go to um, Fresno? Fresno State, baby. Okay. Representing Fresno. Woo, yeah. I love Fresno. NorCal. <laughs> I was I worked Is at my college. I, was like, I don't even Kinda. know if we're NorCal. I went to Chico. Like it's even more NorCal. Chico say that's a party school. Isn't that yeah, that's a party what, school? Yeah, that's what they say. I I, <laughs> I worked at the newspaper say. there too. That it, it's fun. I liked doing that. Wait, but did you work at the newspaper too? Yeah, at, not oh, at Fresno, what? but at, oh, but yeah, at, the Chico uh, State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was um. I guess I didn't like get as into it as you did because I only did it for like oh. a year. No, I was like, that was like, it was, it was actually called the Rampage, the paper at Fresno City. The Rampage. I actually, I actually represent Fresno City College way more than I represent Fresno State because mm. I kind of was at Fresno City College for a long time, like five years. And that's, the, that's where I that's found the community like, college right there? Yeah, community college. Okay. Uh, Fresno City College, Fresno City. Uh, I also, the mascot is the Rams and the newspaper was called the Rampage. So I was like, oh, that's perfect for me. That and I didn't even much. know it. It's too yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And I, was, I, I remember going to school and I saw the paper and I was like, this is ugly. <laughs> this is yeah. ugly. And I didn't know any design at that point. I didn't start designing. I was a photographer at that point. I, I joined as a photographer and then I kind of like, and then they really didn't let me touch the paper. But then one year the, the layout editor left and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to learn InDesign. And then I took over. I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm making this look good now. Oh, uh, yeah. That's actually, yeah. And design is actually the first program I ever learned. Uh, it wasn't Yeah, that's why you got the name. Yep. Yeah. Over, uh, yeah. A lot of people don't know what Overset Tech is, but people who yeah, use InDesign. gives me PTSD. Bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, the girls who know, know, and the girls who don't know, don't know. <laughs> but Overset Techs, dude, getting that air on the bottom left on pre-flight, oh, it's almost that. like um, if uh, anyone uh, like codes, it's similar to that where like you don't know what the problem yeah, is. Yeah, what is you the gotta, problem? Where you gotta is just it? figure it out somehow. And then, yeah, and then you have to like rearrange the text or like you gotta, I gotta ask my editor like, can I delete some words because it's too long or it's too yeah. short? <laughs> I'm like, I have to fill this page. Yeah, where it's all I, justified yeah. and everything's just like yeah, stacking was, all fucking I, I had, like I had a lot of hacks on either how to shorten it or like lengthen an article if I need to. Yeah, uh, but, they used to tell me like uh, you, you can go negative twenty five or twenty five tracking. That's like mm -hmm. the limit you can yeah. you can mess around in. <laughs> or uh, go go twenty. Like, all right, we're gonna make this a, or make the font a little bit like twelve point one or like eleven yeah. point nine. <laughs> and yeah. it'll, and it's since there's so much copy, it'll actually make a difference. Uh, but yeah, that's what I did. And then right out of college, I graduated in twenty nineteen. I got to work 
maybe I shouldn't say the name of the place. But I worked at a local paper here and I designed <laughs> there, worked there for like two years before the pandemic. And then I just kind of quit because I didn't like what was happening there during the pandemic. Were you doing the layout and stuff? Though? Yeah, I was doing too? the layout. I was the layout editor. And uh, yeah, I, I miss it. Like Also, I think that kind of prepared me for the 365 also. It's because... Yeah, yeah. It's just because like it's every weekly and then I have to like design the front page or do something weird with it all the time. Like it just kind of taught me how to think on my feet on what to like make. So that's that's where I learned my design. Yeah. yeah all self-taught, at like no no proper design class. Yeah. I mean, looking at your, at your work, all that adds up, you know, like the, the more I hear about what you used to do, like the more it makes sense on the way you do things with just mm -hmm. everything from the journalism background to like writing headlines that catch your attention to just like mm -hmm. keeping things simple because you know, most of your posters are like basically look like big, like magazine adverts, you know, in a mm -hmm. sense. So like, yeah, I feel like it's weird when you think about things in hindsight like that, because there's no way you could have thought like, good thing I worked at the, you know, rampage so I yeah. could, you know, blow up on Instagram or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, I used to have so many arguments with my advisor about like what we can or cannot do on the, on the front page. Cause I was like, we could do this. We could, come on. Like, <laughs> like design wise or you can't design wise, it's like design like, wise. Uh, political I had, like, or something. No, this is just design wise, like mm -hmm. what, like, cause she was very, I, I still love my professor though. We still talk, but she just is very conservative in like design wise, mm. but you know, I kind of, but with my Instagram, that's me unchained, like creatively, no more, no more editors tell me what I can or cannot say. No more editors yeah. telling me what I can put or, you know, not put on it. Uh, and you know, see it succeeded. So, uh, I just like tell professors them. have to be like that because, yeah. um, like, I don't agree. A lot of the people, yeah, I, yeah. some of the best designers I know, they always have the same story about how, like, their professor didn't even like their shit. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like, Safe Haven. Like, he, he yeah. I heard him talk about how his professors hated his work and, like, they wanted to, like, fail him and stuff and shit mm -hmm. like that. And it's, like, I feel like to give them the benefit of the doubt a little bit, they have to do that because if yeah, they don't, no. people, like, that are bad are going to do whatever they want. And then it's, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly... You know, no, I, I appreciated, like, what she... She taught me. I definitely learned more about compromise. Uh, mm -hmm. But, and also I think there's just like something to be said about good fundamentals, you yeah. know, about rules, about why things are like that. And which is, which I think, and I'm not, I don't really know actual graphic design, but like there's rules for a reason. And some, and you have to know the rules to, to break them, right? Like, you know why yeah. this works. So therefore you could use it to plan, like, I don't know, to like subvert expectations or whatever. I think uh, that's the reason you see stuff online that, um, you know, I think our like current, I guess, bubble or whatever of design is mm -hmm. the you know, full on, like I do, I do whatever I want. Like there's yeah. no rules. And I think it's because these people, like these young kids see these people that are saying things like, you know, like fuck the rules, do whatever you want. But yeah. they're like already really good. And they did the rules for so long <laughs> yeah, that they did the rules. now they're the fucking reason. around. And it's yeah. like, you just, you can't just like, I don't, not you can't. Cause like, what, who am I, you know, but yeah, you yeah, shouldn't, who are we? Yeah. you shouldn't go into like just no rules because then there's no like frame of reference on what you're even like doing. That's, it's not experimental if you don't even know what it was. What to you're begin experimenting with. with. You know? No, yeah, exactly. Cause I, I, yeah, I'm like, I'm all for like doing whatever you want, but there's also like a time and place for like why things are like this. Like I always, and and the problem with because we're there's so many self-taught designers and it's just mm -hmm. kind of hard to not have like that environment like in a school to like discuss these ideas right but i don't know i think it's helpful and then you know i have my own rules i have my own personal rules when i work and sometimes i break Same. my own rules you know like <laughs> yeah. so i'm like all right i'm not gonna do the, what usually i do this but you know what this time i'm not gonna do it uh but also it just saves me time from thinking <laughs> I don't want to think that much sometimes when I'm designing. I'm just like, yeah. I just want to do it. But yeah, no, rules are good. But it's also just do do whatever you want. 
you know? I think the current state of like design or whatever online, it's like, it really is like the opposite of the way the schools act, you know, it's like, they, they're like, what, the, like, you better not use Helvetica, like, use Comic Sans in your corporate logo or whatever. <laughs> like, they're just like, fuck around like 24 7. And it's like, I don't know, like, yeah, anti design. That's don't like you 2022. Wanna, for me, at least, like, everyone has their own goals and things. And like, mm-hmm. for you, you know, you're saying you do things this way to get bigger reach and then you can, mm-hmm. you know, get more clients, sell prints, whatever. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like, I like to fuck around, but. I don't want to fuck around so much that like a client thinks I don't know what I'm doing all either. So yeah. it's like, there's a fine it's balance. A, yeah. I think. It's, yeah. It's a balance. Exactly. A balance. Like I, and usually it's like what I make, I enjoy anyways. Like I enjoy mm-hmm. what the result is. And if that makes me a sellout, I guess it does. But I, you know, if you enjoy it, I mean, it's like this, like you have to play the, the, the game. Like, right. you know, or like you could say, you could be not in the game. You could not follow the rules of the game and that's fine. But then don't be pissed when the yes, game doesn't bro. reward you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's because you're not playing by the game. People uh, spend their whole time trying to change the game. They don't even play it, you know? Yeah, you got to play it a little bit, which is unfortunate. Like, honestly, like the algorithm, I know that is a big worry how algorithms kind of influence art, you know? Like, mm-hmm. because obviously that like influences how we make art. Cause like we have to survive as creatives, right? Right. Uh, it inf- influences it. I don't know for the better or for worse, uh, but it is worrying that our livelihood is kind of dependent on like the algorithm and these tech giants <laughs> to be discovered. Yeah. Like that is concerning. I will admit, but like I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is other than like I gotta make the funny posts to get <laughs> to get paid. <laughs> I think you're, um, some of the stuff you do is kind of almost like an exception to this, uh, idea that I think, uh, you know, stuff that's lighthearted and organic goes far on the internet and stuff sometimes that is like spreading a message or political can get, uh, you know, not pushed out maybe yeah, for yeah. whatever reason, if it's a conspiracy or it's just a bad like yeah, thing, yeah. whatever, but you've been able to do both. Like with some of your stuff that's like, you know, standing for some kind of message, like on a hard mm. line, but also, you know, get this to like a huge audience. So yeah, I guess what I wanted to ask you is like, is that super important for you to like take a stance on things and like oh. use that in your design when you see it happening? Oh, for sure. Like I, I mean, I guess that just comes back to like my journalism days, but also I'm just an opinionated person. And also mm-hmm. as a platform, like I want to just like weed out the people who like disagree with me. Like mm-hmm. if you don't like my politics, don't follow me. If you don't like what I'm saying, don't follow me. Like it's very easy. And I just want to, you know, curate my community. Like, yeah. if, like, and I'm not going to do that by like, I don't know, not being, and also I just want to be myself. Like, mm-hmm. like, I'd like to think my real self and my online self are kind of the same. There's really not much difference, but like, I just don't want to like keep thinking about what I believe or whatever, like worry about like, will my audience like this or will they get mad when I said this? I'm like, yeah, that's just who I am. That's what I believe in. And if you don't like that, unfollow me, block me. I don't care. Yeah. (laughs) Like I always see unfollows as a good thing. It's just like, okay, you're just seeing yourself out. You don't, I don't know what you like, you don't like the design or don't like what I'm saying, then that's good. You know, I don't yeah. want you in my following, you know. I find myself, um, I like to think I don't compromise too much, but I definitely find myself thinking about it a lot. Like thinking mm-hmm. like, should I even say this? Am I gonna, you know, upset mm-hmm. like this? I think the reason, the times I hesitate is when I feel like most of my audience doesn't agree with this. So I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, like I don't want to lose everyone at the same time. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's cool to have a stance and I've been trying to get better at not limiting myself online. But then, yeah, it's like really with everything, it's a balance. Like you don't want to oh, yeah. be so unhinged that like <laughs> people are like scared to be associated with you, yeah. you know, or whatever. I mean, I, yeah, it's just uh, everything online is super hyper polarized anyways, but I like yeah. to think like if you're like, I don't know, like I'd like to cultivate an audience that's kind of like, you know, I've talked to like some followers about like issues, like even like my hardline stance on NFTs. I'm like, I'm still learning about NFTs and I 
would like to talk more about it and like you yeah know, that's going to be a huge issue in 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 our field it's just like nfts and right. all that and i don't think it's going to go away as much as i talk shit about nfts and i don't agree with it i don't know <laughs> it's not going anywhere so i might as well learn about it and maybe there's a way to make it better or something i don't right. know that's but, one that i uh struggled with because at first, I really liked it. Then, yeah, I think everybody kind of did. didn't like it. But then, I felt myself being like, "What I said, like, oh no, like if I do this, everyone's gonna hate me." You oh know? yeah, yeah. And then I just still like kind of did it, and like no one cared. But the problem yeah, is, really if, if you don't do it, do it, you're not even gonna succeed in that world anyway. So it's almost yeah. like you either have to be like you and like hate NFTs and rant yeah, about or, it, yeah. or, <laughs> or just say GM every GM, morning. GM. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like it's take like, the NFT pill and be like, all right, I'm I'm an NFT guy now. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just I don't know. It's just, I just think it's so silly and uh, like the technology behind it. And I know it's because of like the evolution of the art world, and that's just how it is. But I still don't understand what what was preventing people from buying the art in the first place. <laughs> like, why do we need the yeah. NFTs? The part I agree uh, with you a lot is when uh, I've had people ask me about you know some NFTs like. Uh, not ones that exist from myself, but ones that I sh should um, put out that they say. Yeah. And then I say, oh, like you could just like I have prints and all this other stuff. And they're always like, ah, oh, like I'm not interested in that. My God. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like well, if you don't want to print, then why would like Wait, I don't what? think it's a it's not a good investment to spend. I don't think it's like the best investment to buy like an NFT for me if I'm not even that like involved in it. Yeah, that know? doesn't make any sense. That is it's funny. Weird. Like they'd rather have like a f a fake thing than a real thing. Yeah, uh, I should I'm, just put the fucking prints that come with the NFT. Maybe yeah. Go. Somebody did that. They were like, if you buy the NFT, you get a free print with it. So I was like, okay. But I, I think do, that's I, cool. Yeah, that's I like. If I ever do it, that'll probably be it. But I'm very pro artists getting the the bag, especially like small artists. So if, if you need to do NFTs, I'm not judging. I'm judging the the system as a whole like right. the system of nfts as a whole especially like all the people who are doing nfts are like celebrities like what why do they need to do that like yeah and they're the ones getting the most attention like they're not small artists they're not like small right. underground artists getting attention it's all these big ass celebrities like doja cat's doing a nft like why yeah why? i hate when i see that happening and then you go on like Twitter and you see like some kid in like the Philippines or some shit just getting like wrecked for minting an NFT because it's like yeah. immoral. But like, yeah, that was like the most money they've made on their yeah, art ever. Yeah. So it's like, what? Like, what are we no. doing here? You know? Yeah, I would never judge individual artists uh, for, uh, you know, doing NFTs. Like, that's that's get your bag. But like the concept as a whole, like I wish, I just don't think it solves the problem of creatives getting paid. Like, and that's what all of these like foundation open C claim yeah, to say that they're that. doing. It's like, no, that's not what these are. These are for hype. You, uh, the, the only reason why all this NFTs have value is because of hype. And mm -hmm. without the hype, no one wants to buy it, which also, is Also, I feel like the problem that it's, you know, let's say, oh, it'll, people that aren't getting paid will get paid now. The people that succeed in the NFTs seem to be the people that are already getting paid. Yeah, so they're it's already like, successful. So it's like, uh, or they just make, I don't know, who made the JPEG monkeys? I've never heard of them before, but good for yeah. them, I guess. <laughs> Making bank. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's I the one know. part of it I don't agree with is that it's not, I mean, people need to realize like, you always, I hear you and other people say, and I've even just kind of said it myself, like, well, just buy a print or whatever, but yeah. it's not about the art. That's the, yeah, it's not the about day. the art. It's, about it's the not investment. even about the art. The investment. Yeah. Like you're just a, you're basically like a coin, you know, at this point that someone's yeah, investing which, in when they buy your work. Yeah. Which is like the whole crypto world is just like web three, whatever the hell is going on there. It's all about like financializing every single interaction online, which is I don't know if that's a good thing or like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that needs to, that needs to happen, but I guess my biggest complaint with going. NFTs is that people that even like the people that are successful with them that I know and I'm friends with, they'll never like say anything like, you know, uh, defamatory or whatever about, about the NFTs. NFT. They'll just be like, fuck it, change my life dog. Like, you know, like, <laughs> and it's like, I'm sure it did to some extent, yeah. but like, 
can you at least like agree on like some of these points that are obviously true? And then they're because they, saying yeah. bad things, you know, ruins like the the stock, you know, or whatever. Yeah, because like you have it. to be like admitted into the cult of NFTs, and then you're like, mm-hmm. now it's just like because if I say something bad, that's gonna deter people from buying my NFT, which is like that's not good. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I feel like that's why I haven't like done well with it because I'm like, yeah. this shit sucks. But like, yo, I got them, nah. you know, guys. Like, also, this is a long play for me, guys. Like. Once I, I'm such a huge NFT hater and then one day I'm going to make an NFT and then it's going to be worth a lot, guys. Then they're going to be like, if he did it, then it must be legit. I'm going to sell. Yeah. My, my, the biggest non-fungible token is me selling my values. That's just going to happen. And maybe <laughs> I hope it'll be worth enough for me to retire. I can stop doing this. Yeah. Uh, Have you um ever, I guess, what, how do I say it? It's like, with, we were talking a little bit about some of the things that you've taken stance off on and things, and we kind of just went on this little NFT tangent, but yeah, have yeah. you had any, like, you said you've talked to other people about things, but have you had any serious, like, I don't know, I guess like beef or like big arguments with anyone about any big of these ar- positions? About my posts? <laughs> yeah. I mean, people, like, people unfollow me. People just have beefs with me. I'm just like. Especially about like the dumbest things about like art and purpose, which I don't understand. Like that's not even important. Yeah. I'm just like, it's like a discussion that you, you we should have as artists mm-hmm. about purpose and art. But for the other actual serious stuff, like not really, not anyone I really care about, like, mm. uh, like the climate. I mean, it's also like, I'd like to think it's a stance, but also just like making, I don't know, like making f- like saying it in a lighthearted way a little bit like kind of like a joke but to make a point of it like most of my all these serious ones are like unless it's like i made super serious ones where i was like this is this is serious but it's always like in with a clever pun or whatever but i don't know i've never for the things that actually matter (laughs) nobody has ever had any i mean i've gotten mean comments but then or especially the Kellogg's one. The Kellogg's one was a mess. Like the comments was a mess. But I don't even limit the comments. Cause like you know what, there were some discussions there that were. I hope they learned something in there. Like there was. I was. I wasn't in it, but I was. I was reading some. I was like, okay, yeah. these people are discussing things. I can uh, just imagine stuffs like you've seen a lot of shit just because. I get a lot of shit, and it's like I don't even talk about anything serious, and they're like, "What the fuck?" Like, like, where's the link? And I'm just like, "Bro, Yo, chill. yeah." Like, the, the biggest thing that's giving me trouble is like literally my opinions about graphic design, which is like mm, the least important thing. <laughs> the of least all the important things. things in the world. Like it's like I mean that's also the other thing that I enjoy about my work is like I feel like graphic design is such a serious super serious field that no i mean somebody's gonna get offended but graphic design is it's important but it's not that important like i have to mm-hmm. admit like i like if there was a doctor in me i'm like yo the doctor's doing more things than me like yeah. i wish i had a skill that that did that but i mean we are important everybody we are important but uh, we don't need to take ourselves that seriously. Like, you right. Know, I think, um, yeah, everything I see is, you know, another, yeah, like everything is really hyper polarized. Like you said, it's like, it seems like everyone online I interact with either lives in this world of like design is like everything, you know, like you could never, like nothing would get done without proper design. <laughs> without proper design. And, or the other people that are kind of like, you shouldn't even fight like you know like this career is a joke like your like designs is like bullshit or whatever and it's like kind of weird i mean i don't think it's bullshit i just think it's like i know it's important like you know like it's like kind of like my approach to design like there's rules and stuff like this but at the same time if you're too constricted it's just not fun and then that kind of takes out the life and everything like you know like yeah and it's not like we're literally just on instagram like if it was like for like a big campaign of something of importance like we're yeah. designing signs for the actual subway, then uh, yeah, obviously we need to take it seriously. But if it's like for the Instagram, sandwich shop or the actual uh, train or like, station, you know, both <laughs> like those are both important. Yeah. Like if I was designing subway's menu, yeah, I would take that seriously. But I don't know. Like there has to be like some fun in it. 
Uh, I get you. you There's definitely levels to like um, concern too with like the task you're doing. Yeah. If you're making a a post, like fucking make it not, you don't, it doesn't have to be read, but if it's like a sign in a hospital or whatever, like don't like stretch the font too much. Yeah. Don't stretch the font too much. Or like, (laughs) obviously, and also like, whenever I, 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 like, I think this is where I'm heading with like my reels, especially, which also thank you for the tip for making reels. You inspired mm-hmm. me to, to do reels and they've been working very well. But because I want to do more like because people keep asking me what I do and stuff. Well, I saw the one with your feet in the air, like <laughs> on the bed. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about showing up to this podcast in that pose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just didn't work out. But uh, I want to like kind of share my knowledge because a part a big sure. part of why I started also with this is because back in 2019, well, back when I was a lurker for graphic design Instagram, mm. it was so you know you it was like such a different environment. Like nobody wanted to say yeah. any fonts. I know because I was uh, you, not you were lurking there. and I was getting dominated oh, yeah, by no. everyone online. I'm, you know, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was too scared. Like it was a scary environment to start posting in. That's sure. why I didn't start posting. Uh, yeah. so, but it was so hard to find like fonts, like, or what font anyone use. Like, like even yeah. with Roy Cranston's like three, six, five, I always wondered like what fonts, is, like I would see, like, I would look, I would literally go through the comments to find, and people have yeah. been asking, would ask. Well, it's a no, hot grotesque pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. Yeah. I guess I just missed it, but no, like he would just never reply. But like just that sure. era of like Instagram, it was just very weird and like gatekeepy, but I'd like to be the opposite of that. I just like, I'll show you whatever I use. I'll be open about it. Cause I think in my opinion, like you could, like, I'm also not very concerned with being copied. Cause like, I, I'd, I'd like to think that like, it's not that, I don't know. Like I make my work very me that like, you would just have to literally copy me, my personality to be a copy. Right. But, I mean, it's all in the copy. Cause you're basically, yeah. Your stuff is like, well, we already talked about what it's like influenced yeah. by. So they're copying that, if anything, yeah. if they're so, copying. So yeah, I just want to give them the tools and the knowledge of like where my sure. pictures are and just like, because it's really not that hard or it's, it's just like, it shouldn't be that hard. Or, and like, and I would give business to like the people I admire, like Andre, uh, Andre and like Black Market and all, and like also sure. Chaotic No Good, you know. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they they want to know they should then they would pay for the textures. And, you know, I just think it just like, you know, all comes around and, you know, I'm a big believer in like what you put out, it'll come back to you. So I'm yeah. just very generous with what that. Also, um, I agree. I don't think that like I remember, you know, the days of like people not telling you stuff. And like I always tell people, if you want to realize how it was, go post your work on Reddit. And see oh. what people tell you, because that's how it was on Instagram. They'll just wreck Dude, you read it. and I not tell if, you anything. <laughs> I wonder if I ended up on there. But usually, I post like stuff on like specifics of Reddit's. Right, like this is our graphic design. Though, the R and graphic design, talking. and usually they're more appreciative. Like I made like a yeah. Mass Effect post, like Mass Effect ad. Yeah, 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 like community shit. Yeah, I posted that there. They loved it. They were like, "Oh, this is so awesome! Can I buy a print?" I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah. But yeah, I'd like to just share all that stuff and tell people what I do because right. I feel like anyone could do this. And like, I'd like to just give them the tools to do it and make your own stuff. You know, the only thing that bothers me is when I feel like I do that so much that, and then people ask me the same things oh. that I've like <laughs> always like talk about or always cover. I know you do the font thing and it's like, yeah, people what, will say like, yo, how, how do you do this or whatever? And I'm just like, Yo, I literally reels. posted a video about this yesterday. Like, Yo, come like, on. That's why I made that diligence. one post. I, uh, that's why I made that one post. Like, this poster is written in Futura Condensed Bold. Yeah. Don't stop asking me. <laughs> it's, in the it's, co- and it's in the caption. Like, stop asking me. I was just so frustrated. And also, just like, my 365 is kind of like a diary, honestly. It's like a design diary of, like, what I'm feeling that day. It's either yeah. something I'm like, something's really bothering me in the news or... um what I feel that day or what I'm thinking about. Um, well, have you gotten um, a lot of work from this process? I have. Uh, I'm just really bad at <laughs> client stuff. I've done some client work and I'm, uh, I'm getting more. And it's just, 
I mean, at freelance, it's just like, I just feel like I just never get the hang of it. <laughs> like, mm. Is it please, the, if you're a client, to please, you? please email me. But what was that? <laughs> yeah, email. Are, 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 you, are they coming to you, I guess, for like, do you feel like clients are coming to you for your specific approach to things now? Or is it kind of just general inquiries you're getting? Well, it's just like general inquiries still. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way still. Like, it's rare that they're like yeah you know we want this thing you know that's super specific yeah uh i haven't gotten that yet but it's just more general inquiries or like yeah merch design or i don't know although uh i did a couple of times like with i got approached by like this is the best thing i ever did like i got approached by this like for like national voter registration day i did that (laughs) for (laughs) I did that for a day and it was, it was pretty good. Uh, so uh, that one was just, I think felt like purely for me or like my influencer. I, I had like a lot of freedom with that one. That's uh, cool. They liked whatever I made. I was like, oh, sick. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, the Go- GoFundMe one. But oh yeah. Yeah, that was, that was pretty nice. So do you do anything outside of like the stuff you're doing online then for money no. besides the prints? I'm like... Guys, I'm unemployed. Buy a print. Oversettext.com. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I don't do anything. Like literally, because like yeah. during the pandemic, I was kind of like depressed and doing nothing mm. because like I left my job. I was basically freelancing. I left my job because I hated it. It was the pandemic. I was doing nothing. I mean, there was like, and I didn't have influence at that point. So freelancing was like kind of difficult. Right. Uh, and that's when it's I started still difficult. it. Yeah, yeah, it is still difficult, but like, you would think it'd get easier, but somehow it's still difficult. Yeah. But now I have like a bigger platform to do it. Uh, so, uh, but I kind of just like started doing the C65 just because I was doing nothing. And I, I was like, you know what? And my therapist was like, you should do a project because uh, mm-hmm. you're depressed. Yeah. So I was like, all right. I mean, I did like a photo project that went, that worked out well. So I was like, all right, I like projects. Uh, they seem to work. So I, I, I like I said, I, I really admired Roy Cranston's 365. That was like one of my primary inspirations of doing this one. Mm-hmm. So I just like, you know what? Uh, what have I got to lose, right? I'm not doing anything anyways. And I kind of just started doing this and now I did not expect it to take off like it did. And now you kind of brought it back to like the 365 in the Roy era was like the reels of now. Like everyone did 365. Yeah, everyone did one. Then. Yeah. I always wanted to do one, but I just felt very, I wasn't ready yet. But yeah. yeah I, uh, and now I, and my only goal was to like really get better or really find, cause like, especially during my job, during my job era, <laughs> my job era, I was so drained from work that I didn't do anything creative. Same. It was just so hard. And I was like, dude. And then now I wanted to take this opportunity to just like really grow. And honestly, like, I'm like, also, I, I also wanted to say this. Like, I hope people aren't like getting discouraged. Like, how do I put this out every day? Blah, blah, blah. Like, I hope they don't get discouraged because everyone's situation is very different. Like, I'm mm-hmm. unemployed. I have no bills to pay, guys. Like, because I live with my parents. Like, I put my all of my energy is going to this and that's the reason why it's because like all of my literally all my energy like i'm kind of obsessed now with this 365 because like i want to finish this and i want this to be like my only like well not my only thing but like one of the things i look back in my life that i'm really proud of that i did like this is like pure creativity just like Mm -hmm. i'm just doing whatever uh but i hope that people don't get discouraged because like you know we're on social media we always compare each other to everybody but like people have to realize like people's circumstances are different. Like you shouldn't compare yourself to me or anybody else really, because you're going through your own thing. Like, you know, it's your own creative journey. We're all on different, you know, on different paths. So yeah. And everyone's circumstances is different, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just, I am very privileged and I consider myself lucky. And that, that kind of ties in with like, I have to say something with my platform. Cause like, I'm pretty privileged. I'm like doing nothing. <laughs> like, mm. uh, so I w- might as well, might as well do something good, like some good for the world. Right. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know. Like what, that. um, what has your experience been like with selling the prints? Has that been, oh. I, I can never know. Like you don't have to like get into, into it, but has it worked out well or not? 
I worked out. It's been working out. I don't mm-hmm. know how to do math <laughs> or just like the business stuff is yeah. like in terms of like pricing and all that. I'm just like, I don't know what to do, but yeah, it was honestly the best for me because like I finally started to get, get like some consistent passive income, uh, which it's been pretty good. Like, mm-hmm. Because I drop ship, so because if I do this, like, I, the margins are probably worse if I, but it's just so much easier to just drop ship. Uh, yeah, definitely sure. cuts into my profit or whatever. But it's been good. If you don't like, have a reason to not drop ship, drop ship. That's what I say. Yeah. I have I have my own reasons not to, but like I'm not an advocate. Yeah. Saying oh, that I have. It's better. I also, I have I have your print right here. It's up there. Oh, yeah, you can buy that. Uh, yeah, plug on my website. It's great. I love it. Shout out Arch. But yeah, uh, no, I, I've been, and I've, <laughs> I've enjoyed the process of it. Cause like, I don't know. It's just funny. I've ch- I've kind of made it in a, into a meme, into my own, my Instagram mm-hmm. where I just plug it incessantly. So I go to oversetex.com, yeah. go to oversetex.com. So I, smart. I mean, it it's, makes, it's, <laughs> it's working. Cause sometimes I'd be posting one story about like, guys, it's time to, it's that time again to buy friends. <laughs> and then somebody yeah. actually does. I'm like, okay, it's that easy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I always find that Instagram in general is a terrible platform for converting people to other places, whether it be go watch this, go buy this, go do this. Like if I look at the data, it's like rarely coming from Instagram, even as my audience on there grows. Like it's really like you got to make shit so easy to get someone to do something. Like if oh, it's no, more than I made, a couple of clicks, it's Oh, really no, hard. I I was I I when I did my Shopify cuz I do it through Shopify and mm. I had to make sure like does Apple Pay work for this? Because right. for me personally, if like if it doesn't have Apple Pay, like if I add to cart and go to checkout and it's not Apple Pay, I I click out. <laughs> like I click yeah. out. I'm like I'm not buying it. I guess you don't, you don't want me to buy it. get your wallet, huh? Yeah, but like yeah. if there's Apple Pay, like pay with Apple Pay, oh, I'm buying it. Like even, <laughs> I was like, yes, yep. When I bought yeah. this shirt, I, I this Adobe Photoshop. Shout out to at the moment US dot US. Uh, they had Apple Pay. I was like, I guess I'm buying it. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, mine, it's mine now. But yeah, uh, it just has to be really easy. And like even Linktree has like a special thing now where it pops up. I saw with that. The store. That was I was like, oh, whoa. Shows like the yeah. first six, right? Or something. Yeah, like I that. added that in. So I don't know if that's converting sales. Yeah. Um, but also, I, I don't know. It's, I feel like I got a lot of sales because I did a lot of like sales, sales, like, you know, like, pers- like dis- discounts during the Christmas holiday season. Uh, so okay. I'm like kind of curious how it does when there's no discounts. Right. Uh so but I think it's going pretty well. Uh that's cool. Uh definitely need to do more commissions to like but it's a nice, you know, supplement sure. to my non existent income. <laughs> <laughs> but uh well, but yeah, no, the, the the prints are it's been fun. It's honestly working out I worked on that for like an entire month because like every post on my Instagram. Yeah, you were was talking there. about it for a while, I remember. Yeah, it was like on every Cause I, cause I decided like, I want all of my posts to be on the store because it is dropship. So why not? But that right. was, I hate Shopify. Like I pay for Shopify. It's just a hassle to put all that shit in. It's just like, I bet. Uh, like what are your, forever, um, but. what are your, uh, plans for, I guess the future of how, you, what you're going to do online once you finish this like challenge? I don't know what, what number are you at? 231 i think so at the time of this recording 231 232 i don't even know like i'm trying to do that so you have like three months left oh really i have three months left i don't want to think about the end honestly i'm scared of the end <laughs> i have i'm genuinely scared like i think i'm gonna be zuckerberg's depressed. gonna deactivate Again. your account <laughs> right when you complete oh. it's like oh it's done like it's just i don't know what to do afterwards i mean my plan was like to get a job or like hopefully a studio will hire me but it's just like I'm scared of it. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It's like maybe I'll do it. I'll maybe I'll continue doing it. I don't know, but it's just because like this is such a huge part of my life. Like I literally like wake up, I immediately go to design, 
the the posts and then i do everything else like it's the first like i prioritize the 365 above everything right now like i'm dedicating yeah. everything to this and i'm scared of what happens when it's over uh but are you planning know, on I'm, doing anything like uh, more with streaming and things like oh that? yeah no uh since i'm back from the philippines um back to streaming uh soon i mean this week and the next week hopefully now okay, cool like like more consistently again uh but that will be a huge part of what i'm doing maybe do youtube i don't know uh definitely just kind of sh share my knowledge to my because i'm learning new things every day but i definitely want to stream and do youtube probably and show yeah. some tutorials because people keep asking me so i was like all right might as well do it uh, but that's the plan. My plan right now, yeah. Until the end of the three, I don't know beyond the three six five. Beyond the three six five, don't know. Kind of scared. But within the three six five, uh, keep doing the posts, stream consistently, mm -hmm. uh, post content about graphic design. Uh, but and that that's it. Like that's. I mean, I have until I th it ends June eighth. I and my birthday is like June fourth, so. I literally started like a couple of days after my my birthday, so I was like, "All right," but mm -hmm. that's that's that'll be the end, and I'm scared. Don't know why. <laughs> It'll like, be all right. Yeah, It'll all be good. I'm, I'm like super scared, but I'm just gonna enjoy. I'm just enjoying the process, you know. As Christo yeah. said, I, I don't know if Christo says that, but enjoy the process, you know. I'm enjoying yeah, the process he says a lot. He probably said it, <laughs> but I just, um, yeah. By the time this comes out, too, uh, we will have made a 365 post, uh, me and uh, you together. So you guys can oh, go collab. check oh, yeah. that out as well. Yeah, it's going to come the out the day after the podcast. So actually, yeah. I might not might have to wait till tomorrow if you're watching yeah, this wait till tomorrow. it comes out. Yeah, I decided to make this challenge a lot harder by like, oh, I'll do a collab <laughs> a week. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> My original idea was like do a collab secretly with everybody and then post it for like 30 days like 30 mm. days of collapse but then i realized like i won't be doing anything for a whole that's week that's gonna take a while for a whole month yeah. yeah so i was like never mind i'll just do it real, like every week but it's right. been fun it's been fun but, but yeah um other than that i appreciate you coming on man it was great uh, yeah thank you talking to you a little bit more yeah can i plug can i plug something yeah plug it uh i'm plugging at apple garamond check out at apple garamond <laughs> <laughs> at Apple Garamon, great account. But also check out my print store at Overset, OversetText.com. And also I've been doing TikTok now. Doesn't have anything to do with graphic design. Also Overset Text on TikTok. And watch my Twitch, twitch.tv slash OversetText.com. That's oh, yeah. it. That's it. Go check it out. And if you guys want to hear a little bit more, we're going to do a Q&A on the Patreon as well. And thanks again, man. Peace Thank out. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.